thank you for the warm introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm John. Um, without further ado, let's start today's journey. Here, we first focus uh, will be on uh, discussing how 3D culture spheroids can help you with your preclinical research. It's well known that uh, the drug de development is a complex journey comprising multiple critical steps to bring a new drug to the market. This includes the um, early drug discovery, preclinical studies, clinical phases, review phases, and post-market safety assessment. The entire drug development procedure is arduous and time-consuming, often taking uh, more than a decade and costing millions, if not billions of dollars. Nonetheless, the potential of the potential rewards can be life-changing for patients benefiting from innovative therapies. And this journey begins with early drug discovery, where rigorous screenings um, identify potentially active compounds exhibiting therapeutic effects to the target, targeted disease. Promising uh, candidates proceeded to preclinical uh, testing for safety and as uh, an effectiveness assessment. It's important to highlight the demanding nature of drug discovery. Only around 250 out of 5,000 to 10,000 initial candidates reached the preclinical testing stage due to the rigorous selection uh, procedure. For this candidate, approximately 20%, around 50 candidates, make it to the next stage, which is the clinical phases. Making to um, market approval is an extraordinary uh, achievement considering the typically only one of out of 5,000 5, drugs successfully progresses. So as a professional CRO company, we offer a full range of one-stop new drug R&D services. Our expertise uh, covers various aspects, including drug discovery, pharmacology uh, research, preclinical testing, and clinical sample processing and assessment. And today, we're going to zoom in on our uh, preclinical services. What is preclinical, uh, preclinical research and why is it important? Preclinical research includes investigations conducted to assess the efficacy and safety of new drugs or treatments before human trial or uh, human clinical trials. This stage um, plays a critical role in minimizing risks and gathering uh, critical information to ensure the development of safe and effective therapies. The importance of preclinical research can be uh, attributed to several key factors. First of all, preclinical studies enable a comprehensive assessment of a drug candidate's safety and identifying potential risks or adverse effects. During preclinical uh, pre research, numerous compounds are screened to identify um, promising candidates with desired um, therapeutic effects. Besides, preclinical studies aid in um, determining the most effective dosage and formulation for a drug candidate. Moreover, preclinical research investigates how drugs are absorbed distributed, metabolized, and excreted in the body. It also uh, provided, uh, it also provides a preclinical uh, preliminary um, efficacy data by evaluating a uh, drug candidate's ability to produce uh, the desired uh, therapeutic responses. Last but not least, preclinical research sets lights on how a drug interacts with uh, biological targets and systems revealing its mechanisms of actions, MOA. Um, preclinical research can take various forms. It includes both animal-based studies and non-animal alternatives. 
And our company's IND application service platform possesses a deep understanding of the regulatory and policy environment in China and the United States, along with their technical requirements for chemical drugs. Our service platform focuses on three key sections, efficacy testing, mechanisms of action, MOA, and quality control. For efficacy testing, we provide both in vivo animal models and in vitro cellular or molecular models to assess drug candidates ability to produce a desired trans uh, therapeutic effect. Uh, in addition, understanding how a drug interacts with its biological system is critical for advancing the drug development process. Our uh, mechanism of action study investigate the specific pathways and targets responsible for producing the intended therapeutic response. To ensure the safety and uh, consistency of the drug candidate, uh, we perform a quality control test. This include toxicity, uh, toxicology uh, assessments to evaluate potential adverse effects, potency assays, to measure uh, activity and uh, concentration, and consistency at days to, uh, to monitor adherence to strict manufacturing standards. Once completed, we will help you to prepare data and documents for the IND filing. And traditionally, animal testing has been uh, the standard approach for conducting toxicity assessments. However, along with the ethical concerns, there are several drawbacks associated with the animal-based toxicity testing. They are costly, time-consuming, and, uh, and low throughput. Besides, they provide in-depth animal mechanism, uh, mechanism, but not human information. So, the accuracy of extrapolating results from animal studies to human is only around 50%. Recognizing the limitations of animal testing, there have been a significant paradigm shift toward alternative preclinical drug screening methods. And this shift has gained momentum as um, countries like the EU and the United States have imposed bans on animal testing for cosmetic ingredients. Um, one approach driving this change is the adoption of the 3R principle, which aims to minimize animal usage by reducing the number of animal use, replacing them with alternative methods whenever possible, and refining the techniques to ensure better welfare and outcome for uh, animal involved in, uh, animals involved in the research. And to better align with the 3R principle, NAMS has been developed. NAMS stands for New Approach Methodologies, focusing on innovative ways to uh, assess toxicity without um, relying heavily on animal models. One specific um, application of NAM is human-based and in vitro high-throughput screening assays. This assays leverage human, uh, human cell-based uh, models and incorporate uh, in chemical and silico multi-omics studies to rapidly screen large numbers of chemicals for their toxicity, efficacy, and other relevant properties. The conventional um, preclinical models include, as we already discussed, uh, animal testing and monolayer 2D cultures. Animal models offers the advantage of providing a whole body system to study drug response and uh, its consequence metabolite. However, it is costly and time consuming, which can slow down the drug development process Additionally, their ethical concerns cannot be overlooked. Furthermore, interspecies variations can limit the predictability of drug responses in humans. On the other hand, 
monolayer chili culture offer some benefits such as uh, low cost, easy to handle. However, it uh, falls short in presenting the complex uh, 3D architectures of um, native tissues. This limitation might hinder accurate predictions of how drugs will behave in a more realistic biological system. So compared to animal models, many cell lines indeed have a human origin, whereas they, their representations of human biology is limited in traditional 2D cultures. The need for more accurate in vitro models lead to the emergence of the 3D cell culture system, which bridges the gap between traditional 2D culture and the complex nature of in vivo environments. And when cells grow in a 3D configuration, they naturally uh, come together to form clusters or spheroids or at least aggregates. Well, this, um, the spheroids don't perfectly um, replicate all the intricacy interactions between cells and their uh, between cells and their uh, surroundings as seen in the living organism, they do closely resemble the, at least uh, the um, natural shape of cells. The structure of the 3D spheroids include different uh, cellular zones, allowing for adequate oxygenation, uh, nutrition, and waste removal, which is similar to conditions found in a living organism. Using 3D, uh, 3D cultures, uh, bringing numerous advantages over traditional 2D cultures. First of all, they more accurately replicate the structure and interactions uh, like found in a living system, uh, providing a better representation of how they behave. This enhanced Similarity allows for gene and protein expression profiles that align more closely with in vivo models. Additionally, drug response patterns in 3D cultures are more um, comparable to the human tumors or human tissues, offering uh, valuable insights into uh, treatment effectiveness and resistance. Although establishing and maintaining 3D cultures may require additional time and resources, the wealth of information gained from the long-term low-dose repetitive exposure testing outweighs the challenges. Adopting 3D cultures in preclinical research holds significant potential for um, advancing drug development and disease modeling, ultimately lead to improved patient outcomes. Now, we're going to uh, use a case study to show how 3D uh, liver spheroids can help you with your hepatotoxicity uh, hepatotox screening. First of all, why liver? Well, the liver is the most important organ in drug metabolism. It can generate relatively high levels of toxic metabolites. Drug induced liver injury, aka DILI accounts for approximately 10% of all adverse drug reactions and nearly 50% of cases of uh, acute liver failure. With the increasing number of new drug candidates each year, it is critical to establish a reliable strategy for screening drug-induced hepatotoxicity. In 2014, researchers demonstrated that 2D cultured Hep2 cells, a human hepatoma cell line, can efficiently class, uh, classify hypotoxicity based on gene expression profiles. By analyzing distinctive gene expression patterns using microarray-based transcriptomics, they achieved an accuracy of 92% on a training set and 91% on an independent validation set. To address the issue of false positive outcomes in high-throughput screening, the U.S. government initiated the toxicity, uh, toxicology in the 21st century consortium, TOX21. In 2020, 
they published the reports describing the development of machine learning based predictive models for uh, chemical toxicity screening. By utilizing um, luciferase and fluorescent based assays on 2D cultured HEPA G2 and uh, HEC293 cells, their models achieved accuracies of approximately 80% in predicting toxicity compounds. These findings highlight the usefulness of HEPA G2 in hepatotoxicity screening. Well, we know that heavy cultured HEPA G2 cells are um, cost effective and easy to use. They do have a major drawback, which is they lack the expression of important enzymes related to drug metabolism. And he, here's why that matters. Understanding how drugs move through our bodies and their potential toxicity is crucial. Drug metabolism is key in this process. Metabolic enzymes like silicone P450, the SIP enzymes, play central roles um, in drug metabolism. Unfortunately, good decultured HEPG2s aren't good at producing those enzymes. Like what's shown in this figure panel, when we compare the 2D cultured HEPG2 cells with other 2D cultured human liver cells, such as uh, HEPA T cells and primary human hepatocytes, the 2D cultured HEPG2 cells always express lower levels of SIP enzymes, making them a uh, slow metabolizer for various compounds. This means they aren't good at predicting uh, toxicity for compounds that require metabolism in humans. However, things change when we culture those type 2 cells in a 3D configuration. The gene expression and protein activity levels of multiple uh, drug metabolism related enzymes, including the important uh, SIP enzymes, go up significantly, indicating they can handle drug metabolism much better than their 2D counterparts. Not only that, but using this upgraded model has other benefits too. One notable merit is that uh, 3D cultures can be maintained for a longer period compared to the 2D culture, making them suitable for long-term repeated dosing uh, studies, which is more closely resemble the real-life scenario. Thus, the 3D cultured HEPG2 models showcases its value as a cost-effective and efficient tool to offer improved insights into compound toxicity and support safety, uh, safer drug development processes. Now, let's officially start our uh, case study where we compare the toxic effects of acetaminophen on both 2D and 3D cultured HEPG2 cells. Acetaminophen, or APAP, is a commonly used painkiller that can cause liver damage at high doses. Our goal was to understand how the two cell models will respond to acetaminophen-induced toxicity. So we exposed both models to a to the same concentrations, uh, to the same concentration degree or gradient of APAP and assess their cell toxicity over time. Additionally, we collected plasma concentration data from animal and human studies published previously. This would allow us to compare the results from the in vitro model with actual systemic concentration data to determine which model aligns more closely with in vivo responses. Now, let's uh, let um, let uh, let me walk you through the workflow of our experiment. We first set out uh, both two D and three D couches using HEPG two cells under different cultural conditions. Once the couches reached uh, their desired confluency or spheroid uh, formation, we exposed them uh, to different concentrations of acetaminophen. Over time, we observed the cells 
collected imaging data to visualize cellular morphology and performed um, pedotoxicity assays using ATP viability assessment. Finally, we quantified the image data and calculated the IC50 for both models. And in this slide, uh, you can observe the morphological changes in 3D cultured hepatitis 2 cells after repetitive exposure to acetaminophen. Yeah. Based on our previous yeah. experience, spheroids uh, were exposed to low, metal, and high concentrations of acetaminophen for up to 264 hours. When examining the uh, results of high dose treatment, which are 10, 15, and 20 millimolar, we observed a shrinkage in spheroid size from the early time point as early as 48 hours. For middle doses, five and seven and a half millimolar, the shrinkage of uh, spheroids began at a later time point of um, 96 hours. And after 144 hours, here, the morphological changes became visible in spheroids treated with a low to middle concentration, which is two and a half millimolar. In contrast, spheroids exposed to the culture medium, a vehicle control, and low dose acetaminophen, 0.5 uh, millimolar, continued to grow. Notably, the size of spheroids treated with the second lowest concentration, one millimolar, appeared to remain unchanged. This may suggest that one millimolar could be the tipping point for acetaminophen toxicity during repetitive uh, exposure. Is that the case? The imaging quantification just that echoed we uh, earlier observation. Notably, the vegan control uh, and 0.5 millimolar, the lower is the dose, the orange line and the green line. They actually, we can observe a little bit homesis effect, which means they stimulated the cell proliferation in the culture. However, this stimulation effect of 0.5 millimolar stopped after 192 hours of exposure. As expected, one millimolar, the red line, showed adverse effect at the cell proliferation quickly and reached the plateau uh, around 144 hours and subsequently uh, took a negative turn after 124, uh, 22 hours of exposure. This quantitative analysis provide further insights into the morphological changes observed in 3D cultures and, ref, uh, and uh, reaffirm the time and concentration dependent responses demonstrated by the spheroids. And next, we explored the time and dose dependent changes in ATP based availability among different exposures to acetaminophen. And our findings were consistent and more or less consistent with the um, morphological changes observed in previous slides. The ATPSA revealed that 0.5, again, the orange, uh, orange line this time, um, initially stimulated the cell growth, the cell proliferation, but the cell viability dropped after 96 hours of exposure. Similarly, the viability results for other concentrations aligned with their corresponding morphological changes, validating the concordance between uh, these different analytical approaches. Importantly, the ATPSA uh, demonstrated that the drop in ATP levels occur early um, than the corresponding 
uh, morphological changes, which implies that in this assay, ATP assay, may serve as a more sensitive indicator uh, of toxicity. After putting this um, viability outcomes into an IC50 simulator, we observed a clear shift towards uh, the lower concentration over, extend, uh, over extended exposure period. This shift suggests uh, that as the duration of exposure increase, increased, the effective um, concentration required to inhibit cell growth by 50% decreased. And specifically, the mean uh, IC50 value after 144 hours of exposure, the long term, uh, was, uh, was calculated to be around 1 and 1 and 16 millimolar. Here, the hierarchical clustering results revealed a clear uh, separation based on morphological and cellular viability data for both short term and um, for short-term exposures, which means 48 and 92 hours, as well as long-term exposures, which means uh, 144, 192, and 264 hours, demonstrating distinct response patterns indicative of time-dependent effects. Moreover, we see clear separations for the low to middle dose uh, treatment, aligning with the observed morphological changes and alterations in and their cell viabilities. And interestingly, when considering the one millimolar, the second uh, lowest concentration, the imaging results and viability outcomes consistently clustered it together with uh, the lowest dose or control samples. This suggests that the, uh, the effect of one millimolar on steroids morphology and their uh, the cell viability resemble those of the lowest dosage or control groups. And following, we uh, conducted a correlation analysis to explore the relationship between the image data and viability samples at each time point. Remarkably, the uh, correlation analysis revealed a consistent and positive correlation between the image data and the viability measurements throughout all time points, demonstrating a, a strong correlation or association between these two variables. More importantly, all correlation results were statistically significant for the reinforcing the uh, reliability of our measurements and findings. Next, we compared the IC50 values obtained from both 3D and 2D cultured hepatitis cells. The viability results of 2D cultures also um, exhibited time, uh, time dependent drop in IC50 values. When comparing these results to uh, the 3D long term IC50 values obtained over 144 hours, which was around one millimolar, if you take the average of the two. And uh, the 3D IC50 concentration uh, was like more than uh, reached like 16 times lower uh, than the 72 hours IC50 values obtained from the 2D models. And it's, uh, this notable difference suggests that the 3D long-term cultured have G2 cells after the repetitive, uh, repetitive dosing demonstrate a greater sensitivity to acetaminophen compared to their 2D uh, counterparts. To better understand their relevance to a real-life scenario, we dug into the literature to examine toxic plasma acetaminophen concentration in animals and humans. The reported average uh, toxic plasma concentration of APAP in monkeys was found to be around 1.72 uh, uh, millimolar. In humans, a plasma concentration of 0.99 millimolar typically indicate uh, the need for detoxification treatment in clinical settings. 
This con comparison confirmed the long-term re uh, repeated dosing with the 3D cultured Hep D2 system accurately uh, capture uh, acetaminophen toxicity. And the obtained uh, IC50 value for the 3D model aligns well with the in vivo and clinical findings. Thus, our findings underscore the critical importance of using physiologically relevant 3D models in toxicity assessment. And in, in addition to uh, this well-established HEPD2 model, we have developed other 3D spheroids to meet your research needs. This model offer enhanced capability for uh, studying cancers. It is known that uh, curious gene mutation is commonly observed in uh, colorectal cancer, pancreatic cancer, and lung cancers, making it an important target for therapeutic interventions. Here, we have upgraded uh, 2D curious cultures to 3D spheroids to better assist your research. And you can see that after long repetitive dosing, the 3D system show an increased sensitivity compared to their 2D cultures. And in total, eight PRS 3D models have been established, offering diverse options for compound screening and research purposes. These models can provide you with an array of uh, choice uh, when it comes to studying the curious pathways and evaluating the efficacy of experimental compounds. Okay, this is my side of the story. And here I want to express my uh, heartfelt appreciation, appreciation to our talented team for their dedication and hard work in developing uh, the 3D models and conducting all the experiments. And also our brilliant um, bioinformatics experts um, we will just uh, also stand by to help you better analyze and visualize your data. And our sincere uh, a great, a gratitude also goes to our colleagues uh, from the uh, pharmacology department for their valuable insight, support, and collaborations during the, the study. And we would also like to extend our invitation to those who are interested in utilizing our 3D models or uh, have any in inquiries or simply want to discuss some technical details of our research, please feel free to contact our vice president, Dr. Dunn, and our uh, senior director, Dr. Wei, and our business department. And we look forward to collaborating with you. And thank you for your attention. Yeah.